This is Atikube, one of the poorest districts in the commercial capital Abidjan. Football is the firm favorite amongst its young people. A career as a footballer is what they dream of. This is where I learned to play football when I was a leader. It's here where I played with my friends. His ball skills earned him the nickname Eto, after the Cameroonian international. At 14, with a head full of dreams about the Champions League, he got a place in a training school. Then, when vague acquaintances got in touch with him from Italy, he quickly gave in to the temptation to travel there. He was still only 16. They told me to go over there, to get there by any means, that they will help me become a top player. And seeing how much our family suffers, I felt forced to accept the offer. Once his contacts in Italy had convinced him, smugglers did the rest. Lamine paid 1,500 euros and was taken across the Sahara and through Libya to board a boat to Europe. We were out at sea for two days, with nothing to drink, nothing to eat. Two people died on our boat. Then I ended up back in Libya and found myself in prison. I stayed in prison for seven months. I was beaten. They demanded money, they tortured me. Lamine eventually got out of that prison cell thanks to his little football club back in Ivory Coast. Its president paid the ransom his Libyan jailers were demanding. Since then, he never misses an opportunity to raise awareness among other aspiring professional players, warning them against the temptations of football agents and scouts. Any of you come across agents like that who might have even gone through your parents saying that by giving them money, they'll take you halfway around the world, whatever it takes. Anyone had anything like that? You? At a tournament, an agent came up to me to tell us that. Well, I'm not going to say the sum of money involved, but he told us he was going to send us to France to play in tournaments against second division pros. Also doing what he can to stop young players falling for fake promises, a star Ivorian player, Didier Drogba. Every year, some 6,000 children under the age of 18 set off from the continent to try their luck in teams across Europe and Asia. I come across kids who, left to their own devices, have been lured away by agents, spinning them yarn. One thing you've got to be aware of here is that this is also a local issue. Everything begins here, the upbringing by the parents and the coaches. It's precisely for this emphasis on education that these Ivorian football hopefuls have gathered today. The country's best football academies are competing in the Sports and Studies Tournament. And one of the selection criteria for the competition? Having good school grades. All these kids dream of becoming professional footballers, which is a legitimate goal. But unfortunately, one thing that's clear about these kids is their school dropout rate, the total abandonment of their studies, and this creates a whole lot of problems for us. Baba is one of Abdullaye Diabete's protégés. He's only 13, but has already seen some of his friends attempt what they call the adventure. Yes, they went off but got stuck there in Libya. They came back again and, well, they're back playing with us now. We stayed here and learnt a lot. They wasted a lot of time. You've got to do it our way. Just keep waiting and your time will come. Baba's team qualifies for the tournament final. It's an important match. The best player will win a trial at a big European club. It's a close match, but Baba's team finally wins 3-1. Last year I was knocked out at the early stages. This time we got through to the final and picked up the trophy. It's incredible. The best, or perhaps the luckiest ones, will succeed in fulfilling their dreams. But for so many others, despite a tournament like this and the awareness-raising efforts, the temptation to leave the country will be just too strong.